I want to thank everyone that, that really worked to put this together. Chazak Baruch to all of you. You know, it's especially, especially appropriate to do Nefesh HaChaim going towards Shavuot. Shavuot obviously is about Matan Torah. In fact, the Ramban writes in his Perish on Chumash that the reason we count Omer from Pesach going to Shavuot is show that really in his words, is the Yom Tov Acharon of Pesach. In other words, Pesach in and of itself does not have value as Bnei Chorin, as being free people, until you get to Shavuot, he goes as far as calling the entire 49 days in between, days of Cholamoyed. He calls it a long, elongated Cholamoyed, that, that's, uh, that's what man writes, and um, it very much stems with what the Gemara says in Masachet Ketuvot, Kuf Yudalaf, the Gemara says, um, the only one that's really considered a free free agent is someone that learns Torah. Right? That the, the words uh, it says by Luchot Arishonot that Haluchot um, Elohim who Vamichtab Bechtab Elohim Harut Ala Luchot. It was engraved on the tablets and the Luchot. And the Gemara says that Harut and Cherut is the same way. That when you're, it's etched on your heart, like Shalom HaMach says, Kotvem al-Luach Libecha, write them on, on the Luach of your heart, on, on the tablet of your heart. When something is etched into the fiber of a person's being, as, as the Torah being one and, and um, the same with, with you, then you're really free from Yetzirah. Right? There's a lot to, to speak about this. Um, Rab Tzadok writes a lot about this. Rab Hutner uh, in, in Mamarim and also in, in Bachad Yitzchak and Shavuot writes a lot about Luchot Rishonot versus Luchot Shinyot. That's for a, a primary Shavuot talk, really, which is a fascinating, fascinating talk by itself. But um, certainly the element of, um, of Shavuot and Pesach is an element of going towards Ruchniut from Gashmir. You start the uh, the korban of of uh, Pesach as korban haomer, which is ma'achal behema, is the only korban that comes from seorim from from barley. The only one, which is barley, is ma'achal behema, and goes towards Shavuot. Which is the only time also we have an anomaly that we bring chametz lechem chametz. Okay, all the other ones are matzah. The reason being, we show that we're going. From um, Bahamut, when we're going from Gashmut, from us being um, like the Pasuk says, Shlomo Melech writes, Ayr Pele Hadam Yivalid. A human being is um, created, is born like a Ayr Pele, like a wild mule, like a wild donkey. And you go towards, ah, what's that going How's it going? You go towards. Shavuot, Matan Torah, you know, 49 levels of, of Chochmah, and you become totally Ruchani in a way that you could, you could even use your Yitzhara, which is Chametz, for Hashem. Ulovdo bechol levavchem, like the Gemara says, why does it say levavcha, not libecha? Levavcha means two. The Gemara says, bishne Yitzhara, that you could even use Yitzhara in order to, to serve Ribbon So that's really appropriate to have um, sh- the Shara Torah, the Shara Dalet of Nefesh Chaim, going towards uh, the Yom Tov of Shavuot. And Rav Chaim Valajner, obviously, is, is the, the best appropriate author to, to study his works because he's a via a Yeshivot. He's the first one that created the, the Yeshivot the way we have them nowadays. That's why you call him a via Yeshivot. Back then, every person that became Rav of town, part of being Rav of town was you had Talmidim, you, you taught. That that was part of the job. There wasn't a, an organized yeshiva with the Rosh Hashiva and Starim and Shiurim. There's no such a thing. He asked the Gaon, the Gaon told him uh, no in the beginning you know, because he was excited and the Gaon felt like you know, something, sometimes you have to think twice uh, to make sure it's not just st- the st- excitement. Then when he came to him the second time, he let him do it. And he had a very interesting, different uh, way of running yeshiva than we have nowadays. He, he actually had a 24-7 cycle of learning because he felt that the Gemara says, um, first of all, the Gemara says, but the Gemara also says, 
אם לא בריתי יומם ולילה, חוקות שמיים וארץ לא שמתי. If it wasn't because of my Torah, the world would not stand. So therefore, he said, you know, every moment the Torah should be learned in the world, and we want to make sure to have a yeshiva that 24-7 there is learning. So obviously it's not, not conventional yeshiva that we, the way we have it. But also, the Vilna Gaon himself, obviously being the, the person that he was, um, very much had to do with um, the perspective that was developed in the yeshiva communities afterwards and how we look at Torah altogether. And it became exasperated when you had the movement of Hasidim, right? Starting from the Baal Shem Tov and the Maggid of Mezrich, the Mezrich Rebbe, and um, even the Baal Atanya, that there was a tremendous Tanukh HaKam, Baal Atanya was uh, an unbelievably um, big giant of Torah. But nevertheless, he was the first Lubavitcher Rebbe. He was the first Chabad Rebbe. So he was a Talmud, like all the other ones, the Talmudim of the Mezrich Rebbe, by extension of Talmud of Baal Shem Tov. So they had this concept of, of Hasidut that the Gaon very strongly and vehemently opposed and uh, it became like a fight between the Mitnagdim, they called them, and the, and the Hasidim. So obviously he is uh, the Talmud, of the main Talmud of the Vilna Gaon and in his works he incorporated all of that mindset. But this Shar specifically is written as a combat with the Hashkafa, one specific Hashkafa of Hasidim. Right, which again now it's easy to talk about it 200 years later, because everything has become parv. There's no fleshik and milchik. As everything now we talk about it, all the Litvish yeshivas are filled with Hasidic blood because all the Litvaks they got killed unfortunately, more the vast majority of them in 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 the war in Abach. But but um, now the Hasidim are not the same Hasidim as before, and the the Mitnagdim, so the Litvish, are not the same as before either. Everyone values Avoda more, and everyone values Torah more. But back then, it was a real, um, real fight, and some of them did not accept the other one, and, and, and so on and so forth. To the degree that you have to understand, I mean, there's, there's so much to speak about this, but uh, the, in, in, in the Choshen Mishpat, and also the Yeshiva Masechtas of the Babot, Baba Kama, Baba Metziah, Baba Batra, there is, whenever you're in Yeshiva, they tell Ketot, Netibot, right? Ketot is Nesivas. So Ketot um, and, and, and Netibot, they were both the Gedolim of Ashkenazim, Litaim, right? And the Netibot was Rabbi Yaakov Melissa, right? Ketot, Rabbi Yilev, was anti-Hasidim. Netivot was much more understanding. He actually, one of his son-in-laws was, was a chassid. So he was much more, you know, forgiving, so to speak, much more tolerant. The printers of first Shulchan Aruch were all chassidim. So they didn't want to print the ketzot on the daf of Shulchan Aruch. But they couldn't because ketzot and netivot go together. They're arguing with each other back and forth. And they loved netivot, Right? They love the Rabbi Yaakov Milisa. So he printed them so begrudgingly, kind of, they put the ketod there too. It's like, I know. But that, that's how, that's what was going on back then. So here, he picks on one <coughs> element of the Hasidim that they um, connected a lot more to HaKadosh Baruch Hu through Avoda instead of Torah. Now, saying Tehillim, going to Mikveh, um, you know, long tefillahs, Shackling, all, all those things that remnants of it you see still in the my, my kids go to Hasidic school, so it's not just the Litvish, that, uh, the, the the Yiddish that comes with it that they speak Yiddish in the school, but it comes with the whole mindset which is still there from the the Hasidut movement, and uh, by default the, the learning of Torah became like secondary, if any, and that's what the Gaon really fought against, aside from also as they hear the mitzvah, they said they daven much later, and the Gaon says after Zvan Tefillah, after Zvan Kriyat Shema like how can you miss the Zvan Kriyat Shema and so on and so forth but that, that, that became like a very um, a, a very big thing so he emphasizes here on the value of learning Torah, bringing it from Chazal and he was much more respectful 
towards Hasidim. You see, even though that this is written in the in amidst the whole machloket, the bloody machloket, he writes it with a tremendous respect. He has a um, you know a, a point of reference to the Hasidim. He doesn't call them with that name. Like, you know, he mentions it's a mistake, but he has respectful titles for them, basically, as as I will mention to you as we go, we go, we go through it. What is referring to what, and so on and so forth. But his job basically is to bring Chazal and explain how important it is, even though that's obvious. But he says, you know, now this needs to be said. So therefore, he he mentions them, right? So that's. But um, it's appropriate to mention something that Gaon writes. It just came to my mind. It's important Gaon and Mishlei. There's there are many of them. The Gaon and Shir Shirim has a lot of very, very important points that, that fits with what we're going to say. But the Gaon writes um, in Mishlei, in Perak Aleph, Pasuk Chav Gimel, he says, he says there, the Pasuk says, you know, Abiy Alachem um, that, that there's this Ruach, this energy. And Gaon says, what is this Ruach? Writes the Gaon, it's in the middle of the piece. It's Kedai for everyone to look at this Gaon inside. I, I, I'm pretty sure it's, it's there. It's Perak Aleph Pasuk Chav Gimel uh, in Mishlei. He says, this Ruach is every ma- ma'asid that you do, every action that you do creates an energy, a spiritual energy, that that energy comes upon a person and it ain't no shakit. It doesn't stand until it forces you to do more of the same. Right? And he says, that is the pshat with mitzvah goreret mitzvah. That the mitzvah itself brings you to an avera goreret avera. Every action you do, it's either a mitzvah or avera. But this is mentioned already in the philosophy uh, works of the, the early Rishonim medieval authorities, both the Rabbi Nubal in, uh, in his work, he, he brings in Chobat Halevavod, and Rambam writes this as well. They, say, they both actually say pretty much the same way. They say there are three different categories of actions. Right, there's mitzvah, positive, avera, negative, and then neutral, eating, sleeping, whatever. And then they both say, but if you pay attention, then you'll see that there is not the third category doesn't exist because it depends on your kavana. If you eat to be healthy and to be to be over the Hashem, the, all, the eating itself is mitzvah, the sleeping itself is mitzvah, right? Like Pelayu writes, right, he says. He says, you tie your shoe to go to shul with that kavana. The tying of the shoe is, is Messiah. And then the player says, Hayesh chech matok mizeh. Is there anything sweeter than that? Then anything that you do is, is mitzvah. You could go through a 24-hour day. Every second of it be a, be a mitzvah. So, be as it may, he writes, the bigger the, the mitzvah, the greater the ruach, and the more force you'll feel. And, and, um, and vice versa, the bigger Averach has shalom, the greater the Ruach, and the more force you have to, to do Averach. So, Zak the Gaon, what is the greatest mitzvah? What's the greatest mitzvah? So, the greatest mitzvah, Talmud Torah. That's not as, as much surprising as the, re, the, the rest of it. It says, and what's the biggest Avera? You would say Lashon Hara, like the Gemara says in Erech, in the Daf Tetvav, the Gemara says, uh, Lashon Hara is equal to, to all the three Hamurat, right? That's the Gemara says. And you say Bitutara is you know, saying, well, you have a lot of lot of gemaras for Bitutara, right? The says in Brachot of Hey that you know if you the Surim buying all of you should be in Fashish Asav, Fashish and if you didn't find it Leba Bitul Torah. Bitutara seems like this big thing. But he doesn't say any of them. He says the biggest Avera is Dvarim Betelim. Idle talk, garbage, like, you know, wasting life. By, by talking about the nonsensical things, right? There's Divrei Chol and Divrei Mbeten, not the same thing, mm-hmm. right? Divrei Chol means your mundane <clears throat> daily things that you have. You know, businesses, that's Divrei Chol. Divrei Mbeten means just idle talk, you know, nonsensical words, right? So th- th- that's what the God says, and then he goes to explain why you see, you know, people enjoy schmoozing and, and so on and so forth. He connects it together. But the greatest single mitzvah that we have is the mitzvah of Talmud Torah. Actually, the Ramchal writes in uh, Der Hashem, in Chelek Dalet Perkbet, I think it is, um, he, he writes that Hashem sends a shefa, everything that exists in the world, every second is recreated, right? Hamachadish b'chol yom betuwa b'chol yom ma'aseh b'rashit, right? Hashem recreates every split second, everything is, why? Because when you make you take this plastic and you make a table from it, so it doesn't need me anymore. 
is yesh me yesh. I took something that already existed, I, I reformed it, I formatted it again, and I created something. So it could outlive me by far, right? But when it's yesh me ayin, the only reason that this atom, this molecule is here is because I want it to be there. If I take my thing away from it a split second, it will go, be chozer le tohu vavohu. I will go back to nothingness. So Hashem, every second it's keeping, it's a recreation. So it says, says the Ramchal, that Shefa of the creation, which is the greatest Shefa that exists in the world, Hashem tied it in the Davar Siguli, as a Davar Siguli, to one of the Tariag Mitzvot, be it the Mitzvah of Talmud Torah. So whenever you, you're learning Torah, you're tabbing in the greatest Shefa, greatest single Shefa that exists in the whole creation. Right? And then he goes to say, if you learn Torah Lishma, then you take the full thing. And the, the less lishma it is, the less shefa you bring. He connects it with that Gemara in Brachot, that, you know, if you learn it with, 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 with trepidation, and with proper awe of, of what you're involved with, you know, one of my friends was saying, whenever I daven, I speak to Hashem. Whenever I learn, Hashem speaks with me. So if you have that type of mindset, you know, I'm being spoken to by, by Ribbon Shalom, when I learned even the words of the Gemara, that's the you know, words of Rebbe Shalom, words of Tarsh Pal Peh being, being announced to me. So that, he says, you get more, and the less, the less, the least, is a person that is like Kanter, he says, you could technically get zero Shefa if a person is just learning Torah to, to find problems in it, like the, mm-hmm. the Bible critics and, and so on and so forth. Okay? So that is the general notion. Anyways, but it's Kedai to go, to go through this. He, you know, he was... I was very young when he became a Talmud of the Gaon. He, I think, it was if I'm not mistaken, was 19. When he, his name was Rebchaim Itzkovitz, uh, but known to everyone as as Rebchaim Velazhener. And uh, he first was a Talmud of Shagad Aryeh. Very interesting. Both of his Rebbeim, they felt very comfortable disagreeing with Rishonim, even that's the caliber they were, they they had. Right, the Shagad Aryeh was, you know, in his in his safer, he is quick to if he doesn't agree with Arisha, and he just mentions it like that. And the Gaon also felt comfortable at some points to, to disagree with Arisha, which is, you know, few few of the Achronim were like this. Normally speaking, you don't have this. You don't, you, even the, the Shach even brings this in Chosh HaMishpah, in Simon Chav Hei, in Sifkat Chav, that um, you, there, there is a discussion whether or not the Maharik is one of the Gedol Achronim could argue with Tosfot. And says, no, you know, just like Tanayim and Amorayim, Amorayim don't, don't disagree with Tanayim, aside from the exception of, of Rav, that the Gemara says, Rav Tana, who Pali, Rav could disagree with Tana. And one place, the Tana says about Rabbi Yochanan as well, that Rabbi Yochanan perhaps is, is like a Tana, and could argue. but Amorayim do not disagree with Tanayim, so Achronim don't disagree with Rishonim. But certain Achronim, like Prichadash, Rav Chizkei de Silva, he was the two generations after Maran Shacharuch. He was 20 when he came from Italy, and he became the, the Talmud of uh, Maram Galanti. Rabbi Moshe Galanti was the first Rishon Sion. Now you have this whole fancy Rishon Sion thing. It's it's a very old minhag. Ashkenazim think that you know, this is like a, some political job, because nowadays it has become somewhat political. But back then, they, they chose uh, unanimously between the Chachmei Israel the greatest time Chacham, and that was the, the, the Rishon Sion. So the first of the Shushel Rishon Sion was Rabbi Moshe Galanti, was, which was a Talmud of Maran Shukharu. Right? So he had the yeshiva, Prichadash became his Talmud, he only lived 37, 38 years, I think. But it was Gaon, okay, it's a pleasure to read Prichadash. To me, he's, he's the Gedol Achronim. So he was quick to, to disagree with um, with Rishon. There's a specific place that the Shach uh, in Yerdea asks a question on Rashba. And he says, I understand it, it's very schwer. And he says, he says, okay, maybe he meant this. And he goes to say some complicated cheshbon. Prichadash asks the same thing. Obviously, Prichadash was before. And he says, yeah, it doesn't make sense. He's wrong. The real pshad is like this. He just disagrees with the Rashba like that. And the Rashba is, you know, Gedol Arishonim. The, the Manash Haruch in three places says about him. In one place, says Rashba was Or Olam. In, in one place he says Amud HaOlam, in one other place he says Amud HaOra, he's one of the greatest tradition. But again, some some of the Achron. So Shagad Ari was one such such Achron, and the Gaon was the the other one. So you have to understand the the caliber of Rav Chaim. Rav Chaim at, at age 19 already he had graduated learning with with uh, Shagad Ari, and he was a Talmud of of the Vilna Gaon. So let's let's begin. I think we have we have enough of the Chabad here to start. 
עוד זאת אמרתי, oh, so really it's not fair what we're doing to start from to jump into Sha'ar Dalet, because if you really don't study well the first three Sha'arim of Nevesh HaChayim, you won't appreciate Sha'ar Dalet either. It's all one thing, right? And the theme, I could tell you, go, go on and saying the theme of the first, the, the, the fr- first three Sha'arim, which Sha'ar Gimel really is not learned in the Yeshiva. They do f- first Sha'ar second and then they jump into Sha'ar Dalet. Um, but Reb Chaim, Reb Chaim's theme is that a person is placed in this world for a, a greater tikkun than the tikkun of self, right? Everything that you do is for a bigger sorech than yourself. He mentions that even though that you get schar, right? But the schar is part of Rasa Hashem. He brings Moshe Rabbeinu that the Gemara says, well, why did Moshe Rabbeinu want to go to Eretz Yisrael? Right? He, he wanted to have the, the, the jaff of fruits? No. He wanted, uh, he wanted to get schar. So, Frak Reb Chaim, what Moshe Rabbeinu wanted to get schar, well, he, he missed the Mishnah Gimel in Pergal of, of, of Pirkei Avod that, that, that says, uh, that Moshe Rabbeinu wanted schar. Right? Everyone is familiar with the Mishnah, right? So, and, actually, there are two girsot in Rishonim in that Mishnah. The regular girsa is, don't be like Avadim, Hamisham Mishim Etarab, that serve al minat l'kabel schar in order to get schar. Aval tiyu ka'avadim, Hamisham Mishim Etarab, shalom al minat l'kabel schar. Do it as if it's not necessarily for getting schar. Shalom al minat l'kabel schar. But the girsa of Rabbeinu Yona and a number of other Rishonim is even more severe. It's, al tiyu ka'avadim, Hamisham Mishim Etarab, al minat shalom l'kabel schar. But davka al minat not to get schar. So he says, how, "How do you understand? How do you understand this? Um, how do you understand this? Um, let me just put this on. He says, how do you understand this? This, mish, this member of, of the Gemara by Moshe Rabbeinu? So he says something very high level, something to look up to. He says because Hakadosh Baruch has created the world, right?" In order to do good, like the Zohar Kadosh says, right? Hashem, it's the ultimate mimidat hatov lehetiv. The real good is is overflowing with goodness. Hashem wanted to create mekablim for that good that He has, and that's why He created us. So, giving schar is part of that goal of the creation. So Moshe Rabbeinu wanted to enable Hashem to give schar because that's the purpose, not because He wants the schar selfishly. That's it. Very high level. Is that clear? Am I making sense to you? Yes. That's a very high level. I Meaning, one thing, schar, but not because I, I need, I want it. Because you create the whole world to, in order to enable the, the, the flow of goodness, and I want that to happen. So that's, that's that level. So uh, let's now start a little bit of Shar Dalit. Odzot Amarti Lavobim Gilat Sefer. I told myself to, to write a little bit about the greatness of Esek Torah, learning Torah. Al kol ish Yisrael, yom v'layla, every yid, both day and night. Like this is, like the Lashon of the Rambam in Chotam Torah, that every Jewish person, ben ani, ben ashir, it doesn't make a difference if you're sick, if you're healthy, if you're old, if you're you're young, if you're rich, if you're poor. Every person is is chayav to learn Talmud Torah, chayav to learn Torah both during the day and at night. This is in Perik Aleph Al Chachet of Rambam in Chot Talmud Torah, and and really it's, it's a gemara. The gemara says this in. In Masachat Merachot Daf Saditet, Machloket Rabbi Ishmael and Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, what is the sh- the minimum shear of learning Torah every day, right? Which is actually very interesting because many people see this as a stira with another Gemara. Um, shall we speak about this for two minutes? Let's let's, let's go. This is an important tangent. Gemara says in Masachat Merachot Daf Lamed Hamud Bed, Machloket Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, Rabbi Shimon says a person should work. Right? Like the Mishnah says in Pirkei Avod. The Mishnah says in, in, in Perek Bet, Mishnah Bet of Pirkei Avod, Rabbi Gamliel HaOmer, Tov Torah, 
יפה תורה עם דרך ארץ. סלאשן. יפה תורה עם דרך ארץ, שגיאת שניהם משככת עוון. It's good that you should work together with, with your learning, because if not, you know, then it's גורר את עבירה, וסופה בטלה, and מביאה לידי עוון. So, he brings a פסוק, he says, how do I know that's מותר to work? You see, the סברה חיצונה is, it's not מותר to work, it's just like that one later. So how do I know it's מותר to, to work? Because the פסוק says, ואספת דגריך. Right? The Torah is giving you a shoot to work, says Rabbi Ishmael. Rabbi Ishmael says, what? How is that possible? Afshar Adam Zorea b'shat zriya v'kotzer b'shat tzira. Is it possible that the person is going to be plowing and planting and, 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 and harvesting? Torah matiya aleha. What's going to happen to Torah? Ella, he says, no, you, you learned wrong pshat in Pasuk. I'll tell you what this pshat. Pshat is, bizman shi Yisrael osin retzono shel makom, when you're doing good, when Hashem is happy, melachta nyasid al yideh acherim. Other people take, it, take care of your job, right? You don't have to do your own thing. People, people do it for you. Shenemar, as it says, ve'amdu zarim, ve'ra'u sonechem. Strangers are going to come and take care of your zachin, your things, right? בזמן שאין ישראל עושים רצונו של מקום, when you don't do your רצונו של מקום, then מלאכתה נעשית על ידי עצמן. then you have to do your own job. שנאמר ואספת דגניך. So that פסוק that you're bringing in שמה is, is talking about זמן שאין ישראל עושים רצונו של מקום. It says, ולא עוד, and not only that, אלא שמלאכת האחרים נעשית על ידן. You have to do other people's work also. שנאמר, I guess it depends how bad you are, שנאמר, ועבדתם את, את אויביכם. That you're, you're going to be serving your, your enemies, right? So therefore, he says, no, you learn Torah, and that's it. Then, the Gemara says, Amar Abaye, Harba Asuk Rabbi Ishmael, Wa'alta Biyadan. Many people took the, the, the Mahalach of Rabbi Ishmael, and they were successful. Harba Asuk Rabbi Ishmael, Wa'alta Biyadan. Right? Many people did Rabbi Ishmael, Wa'alta Biyadan. By the way, the Akronim write that the Gemara doesn't give a Pesach. The Gemara doesn't say, Halacha Kerabi. It doesn't say that. Why? Because there's no one halacha. Both of them are true. You have to be holding in that madriga. Right? Like this guy was um, was not respected very much by people. So he goes to one of his peers, one of his friends, and, and he says, you know, it, it, it says when, when you, um, you know, when you learn Torah, get, they give you kavod. What happened? He says, no. If, if you run after kavod, the Torah runs away from you, right? Kol haboreach min ha-kavod, kavod is rodef ha-kharav. But kol ha-rodef kavod, so he says, but I, I don't run after kavod, I run away from it. He says, yeah, you do run away, but you look back to see if it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> you look back to see if it's coming. So, if, you know, so that's, that's what Bishim Baruch Hai says. You, you learn and things, things fall into place. You have to be holding in that madriga. If you're looking back to see if the guy is coming to do your thing, so then you're not holding in that level of, of you know, the Gemara says Bishim Baruch Hai and Vechaverav, they're patur from certain things, you know. In Yanea Tfila. And the right, we don't have anybody like, like that anymore. That is Torah time, you know, the, the, their Torah is, is their Melacha. Anyhow, so that's, the machloket in in brachot in gemara in menachot is a machloket of shiur of talmud torah minimum shiur of talmud torah and guess who are the two tanaim the same two tanaim rabbi shmuel and rabbi shmuel yochai but it seems like exactly the opposite over there rabbi shmuel says vagita boy one balayla every second of the day you have to learn every second of the day you have to learn right there's actually a yerushalmi in peya. In Perak Aleph Al Khalif, um Dafgima, I think it is. He, the Yushami says, Sha'alumi Rabbi Ishmael. No, sorry, it's Rabbi Yushua there. But it's very aligned to this. It's Sha'alumi Rabbi Yushua. If it's mutter to teach your kids, Chokhma Yevanit. Right? Other you know, worldly things. He says, Yeah, you could do it with Sha'a Shelo Yom Velo Laila. You could do it in a time that's not day and it's not night. Because it says, Why get a boy Mamba Laila? You have to learn to Right? So Rabbi Ishmael says, He says, Why get a boy Laila? If you find some, some time that's not day and not night, so, kol kavod. But any moment that you have, and you're not, then you're b'chuyot to learn. Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai says, no, what are you talking about? Kriyat Shema Shel Shacharit, Kriyat Shema Shel Arvit. Right? 
It's the minimum is when you say Shema in the morning, you say Shema at night. You're yotze, right? Because that's Ivra Torah. You said Ivra Torah already. You're yotze. And then he says, "V'davar ze asur leomra bifnei amharis." I'm not sure if you could, you could be recording this. He says, you know, "This you cannot say to amharis to people because then they take advantage of it. You know, they mis- misuse it." So oh, I'm yotze. Okay, they're not going to go learn. So Rabbi Shimon Bar Chai, who has that strong stark thing in, in, in Brachot. Now he says, ah, get right. and Rabbi Ishmael, who says, yeah, you should go work, he says, no, the whole day you have to... So many people see this as stira. I don't think it's a stira. Because in Brachot, they are discussing the Mahal HaChayim. What is the Hashkafata Torah? What's the, the Chathila Hashkafa? Should, we, should I just drop the work and go sit kolel, naked, you know, Yuman Valayla, full-time kolel? Or should I work? But once you, whatever it is that you hold, what is the minimum of the Torah that you, you have to learn, right? So Rabbi Shema will tell you, any moment you're not working, you have a heter to work, so it's the proper hashkafa, the Torah is teaching you, Vasafta de Garecha, it's the proper hashkafa for the Hamonam, for the most, most people. But whenever you're not, then you should be learning Torah, right? And Rabbi Shema says, no, if you're not feeling good, whatever it is, or if you're busy with mitzvot, other things, but that doesn't mean that you're going to be doing that for a living. Hashkafat the Torah is, don't even work. Like, you learn Torah the whole time, right? So that's, I don't see it as a stira. It's two different topics, which both of them show you different elements of Hashibuta Torah. That even, it's actually greater, because even Rabbi Ishmael, who says that proper Hashkafat is to work, he says, yeah, but... Whenever you're not learning, you should be, even you're not working, you should be learning Torah. There's this uh, fellow that was known in um, in Eretz Israel. He gave he gave a siyum uh annually every year. There's a certain time that he finished shas and he invited Gidolei Ha'ir v'chule. So one year after two months after his siyum shas, he invited them for another siyum shas. So people come in and say, another Chazara in such a short time? He says, no, 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 this is a totally different story. I don't know even how many years I've been doing this, but I start from Brachot. In the times that are not, Bizman Shereno Zman, five minutes I'm waiting for, for Brit Milah. You know, you go to Pidyon Aben, you go, you're waiting for the bus, you're in the line for whatever. And I had a small shas, I, uh, and during the course of these years, I finished the entire shas. It's a special Siyuma shas, right? You know, we spoke, he's we speaking about Abhaim Balajan, and when, once they asked him, he said, what's the difference between you and other people that you came so great? He says, five minutes. So what about five minutes? He said, every five minutes that I could use, I used. Other people didn't necessarily use it, right? Because that's the, the, the altar of, of um, Kelm, in Kelm, in Shivat Kelm, they, they instituted a seder that was l'chathila, measured five minutes. It was a clap, it would start, and then the clap, everyone would stop. Not more than five minutes. And the altar of Kelm had two points of doing such a thing. The first point was to show them that five minutes is important. Yeah, five minutes here, five minutes. So don't, don't be a battle, a mebaze. Don't disgrace small time. Yeah, five minutes here. Can you read? People are watching it at the time. You know, Chachamadi would, would cover two black gemara until they come sit. I can't do two, 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 two lines, do a few halachot, whatever it is, right? It, it's something that you get used to it, you know, and hopefully you don't fall off. You know, I guess before before we had the kids, I was more, more careful now, it's a little harder because you know, something's happening at all time. But it's a chashivut of, of, of two minutes. So I have two minutes, or five minutes. But the second point was to show them how much they could accomplish in those Five minutes is if it's consistent. Because after a few months, they finished the whole Sefer. And they started another Sefer. At the end of the year, they were finished with a few Sfarim. Only in that set, set there are five minutes, because they are every day. Shabbat, Friday, Mutzah, Shabbat. Every day, there is, there is this Seder. If it's consistency, then you'll see that how much how much a person could actually accomplish in a little short amount of time. So, we should have it. We should have it. There we go. Blin Eder. Yes, it, it, it is something something small that the person does. He doesn't take a sefer and say, I'll learn for five minutes after, after shaharid every day. Right? But every day. I'm late for carpool. Five minutes. Right? And then you see that you know, I, ha- I had this seder before I fell asleep. 
um, as a as a bacher in Shiva, because I had the light of the bed, I had to ask Mechila for all the people if they were like, it was a small thing, light, and so many Sfarim, you know, the whole series of Chidas Sfarim, and, and this Sefer, and that, all of them in that like, few minutes before you fall asleep, a, a person gets used to, to accomplishing in small time, that obviously is, is something where, okay, so he says, This is just a poetic way of saying, you know, I, I want to explain how important it is, and so on. And, and a person that, that um, a straight person that wants to to learn and be involved with with the Torah and have Torah Chesed al It's not Torah Chesed means it's not just to to learn, but also to teach, right? That's the the Torah Lil Mod Al Menat Lelamed, which is the the ultimate um, the the ultimate level. Laasot Nachad Ruach Liyotro. To do nachadruach for Hashem, the ish data ma'amets koach, and a, a wise man that strengthens himself to the tomchah ule saadah ule chazek bitka. So it's not just for uh, for for learning it, but also for people who are supporting it. So people who, in any any way possible, they they give support to the Torah. Actually, it's very interesting. You shall me. The, the Tosfut brings us in Masechet Sotad Aflamet Zayin, quotes a Yerushalmi. It says, you ready for this? It says, Lamad velimet, if you learned and you taught, right? Shamar ve'asa, and he kept all the mitzvot lo and he did all the mitzvot ase, v'hayab be'yado, and he could have, right? L'achzik velo yichzik, he could have supported more, and he didn't, Right? The, the, the Yerushalmi says, Hareze, this is included in Asher Devar Hashem Baza, Arur Asher Lo Yakim at Torah. There's 11 Arurim in the Torah, right? Curse this, curse that. And the last one is Arur Asher Lo Yakim at Divre Torah Azot. Right? Someone that doesn't hold up the Torah. And the, the Yerushalmi says, this, this Tosfod in Sotah brings in Lamed Zayin, I'm with bed. That that a person that could support could hold up the Torah and doesn't is including that. So that's why he includes that as well. Actually, I'll tell you something very interesting. I tell tell this to Chatanim, um, not Chatanim, the people who were dating, especially if they were dumped, um, didn't work out and they're like broken or whatever. So I tell them what Maran writes in in a sefer. Maran had a malach that used to learn with him every day, and he um, wrote all the things that he learned. The sefer called Magid Meshari. Okay, it's divided to parashiyot, lala kabbalah, a lot of very interesting things. So in Parshat Lech Lecha, he writes, he says, the Malach came to me, and he said, Hello, itlach leminda, it's written in Aramaic. Um, don't you have to know? Basically, he says, I want to tell you something. And he says, pause, pause. Again, he says, I want to tell you something. And he paused again. So for an hour he was doing this. And so at the end he said, look, they told me from Shemaim to tell you this. I've got to tell you this. I want to tell you who your wife is. Who's Neshama, your, your wife is. He says, you remember you wanted to marry so-and-so and it didn't work out and you were so broken? So it happens to everyone, you see. This is the Maran. Maran, yeah. The Malach is talking to Maran. He says, you remember? He says, Hashem wanted to, to save this one for you. If you knew if you knew who, whose neshama your wife is carrying, you would be embarrassed to live with her. So why did she come back in, in, in Gilgul? By the way, from this you see, there's a whole machloket between Mekubalim, if, if Zahara and Nekaba are interchangeable in Gilgulim. It's a whole different thing for, for a different time. But you see from here that he could. It says, in, in last Gilgul, it was a bigger, much bigger time, Mechacham and Mekubal, everything than you. But he did not, he did not do Hachzakat the Torah as much as he could have. Right? He did not hold, and therefore it was Nigzar and this Neshama to come and be married to the Gadol Lador because the whole day she's she's supporting and she's supportive, and there's a life of supporting the Torah. So that, that was that was her thing. So whenever I say that, I remember this is a pretty scary thing. You know, it's, even the Talmud Chacham, it's not it's not patur from this. You know, apparently this was a bigger Talmud Chacham than Maran, and still he could have done Chazakat the Torah and didn't do enough. Did but didn't do enough. So, so okay, you go back, you marry Maran. So that's uh, pretty scary. So he says, he says over here, to, to support it, to hold it up, to build it, 
אחרי אשר זה ימים רבים לישראל, שהושפל עסק התורה הקדושה, it's been many days, many, you know, long time that the, the, the עסק התורה has been all the way down, בכל דור ודור, in the generations past, והן עתה בדורות הללו, בעוונותינו הרבים, in our generations, בעוונותינו הרבים, נפלה מאוד מאוד, it has dropped very much. נתונה בסדר המדרגה, it's, it's covered, right, התחתונה רחמנה ליצלן. אוקיי? So, therefore I'm, I'm going to, you know, talk about the importance of it. כאשר איננו הראות אתה ברבת בני עמנו, you see it, many, many people in our, our nation, מגודל סבל מסע עול הפרנסה, because of the difficulty of, of פרנסה and working and so on and so forth, they are not learning enough, right? <coughs> you see this, the Tosfodim Baal Metziah brings in Kufi Dalet, that even Tanaim had this, okay, it's not a new thing. That there it also talks about uh, one of them that was, was, ta- was talking to Eliyar Navi, and uh, he, he said something that he didn't know. He says, you know, Shisha Stadim, I don't know. It was working, you know, uh, we're struggling even with, uh, with the regular ones. Don't, don't know all the Shisha Sidre Mishnah. So it wasn't a new thing, but obviously it's become more and more. So here is the, the, the um, hint to the Hasidim. Okay? He calls them אותן אשר קרבת אלוקים יחפשון, those who want to be close to Hashem, right? Which is a, a, a very nice way of referring to people who focus on avodah versus focusing on, on Torah. You know, the old tehillim and tehillim and reading different things and davening long tefillot and so on and so forth. So he calls them אותן אשר קרבת אלוקים יחפשון, הם הבחרו לעצמם לקבוע כל עיקר לימודם בספרי יראה ומוסר כל הימים. They have made this, their kvyut on learning Musar the whole day. This is Eder Musar, that's Eder Musar, which is important as we're going to see um, soon. I mean, Rishonim wrote Sifrei Musar, right? Rishonim wrote Sifrei Musar. By the way, what's the Chidush of Rabbi Israel Salanter? He's the father of Musar, Musar movement, right? What's the Chidush? What was this Chidush? Rishonim wrote Sifrei Musar, right? If so many Rishonim wrote Musar. So what's the Chidush of, of Musar movement? Right? So he had two chidushim, Rabbi Yisrael Salanter. It's a, for, really for a different talk, a different time, of, you know, for people who start learning Or Yisrael, for, for Rabbi Yisrael Sefer. But his chidushim, if you sum it up, was two things. A, that um, prior to, to this, people who felt shvach, right? You would, you would learn Musar. Just like, you know, Ben Azmanim. I always call this Ben Azmanim. It's Mana Benim. What's Ben Azmanim? Right? Well, it's Torah is off. <laughs> so she has to a whole month off. Like what? Hachodesh azel lachem. The whole Nisan is off. You know, but uh, I, I never understood it. Like I said, zman abenim. I'll do sugiot that I I can't do during the year. I do that. So prior to 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 the modern era, there was no ben zmanim issue. What they learned, they, and according to Chazal, only anti Shabbat av you mebatel the tinoch shabbat and erev yom kippur and that's it. Right? Shabbat every day they, they learned in the cheder, right? Everyone that felt schwach, they, they needed off. They were like, oh, okay, I, I, you know, I need some air, basically. I need to go relax a little bit. They would go, but not off officially like that, right? So the same thing was, the same thing was, was for, for this as well, that, that a, um, you know, by the way, the Gaon writes that you need, you need some talk, you know, in the Memchet Dvarim Shatran Niknet Bahem, in, in the Perak Shishi of Perak Avot, one of the, the 48 ways of Torah is Mi'ut Sicha. Right? So how do we understand Mi'ut Sicha? Talk less. Right? Gaon says, no, Mi'ut Sicha means you have to talk a little bit. Because if you don't talk, your mind is going to basically get burnt out. You need to, you know, have some, some interaction and so on and so forth. So, that, that, that's that's it. So by Musar also it was the same way. Someone that felt like you know I need some chizuk, I need some Musar, they'll go learn Musar. That's why the Rishonim wrote Musar. Rabbi Israel's first chiddush was no, you have to learn Musar every day. It has to be kavua learning of the day. Right? That's the first chiddush. Second chiddush was you have to speak to your neshama, so you have to sing it to yourself. If you would see someone one of the Talmidim of Rabbi Israel's Hunter, you would think they're crazy. They would sing it to themselves, they'd mamash, like, you know, out loud, and go over and over and over. You know, one of the brisk, uh, I don't remember, was Brisk Rav's son, or nephew, I don't remember exactly, one of the brisk family, he, for the entire Elul's man, half an hour a day, Musa Seder, 
learned one sentence of Mesil Hashem. One. One sentence of Mesil Hashem. How many hours is that? So if it's 40 days, it's 20 hours of, uh, of one sentence. Mayane Leom Adin. Yeah. He'll go over it, over it, back and forth, and think. Of, he felt that you have to. It's the the language of the, the song, singing to your neshama until he goes in. Just up here is not enough. It has to be connected to the heart. So that was the second chiddush to learn benigun, to learn musar, and say to yourself benigun. Which again, as I said, nowadays you would think they're weird if they if you would see someone do that. But that was that was a bissel santa. They had batem midrash bet musar. As a place with all the Sivir Musar, this Musar Talmidim would go there and spend, you know, long times to, to work this. So that's obviously something valuable. We, we're not, Chaz uh, knocking that in, in any way. But he, and, well, he is, he, because he's coming La Fuke, the Hasidut movement, La Fuke Torah. And if you're doing only that, right, and not, not investing in Torah, that's obviously wrong, he says. Without the ikar of the learning being in Torah Tanakh Kadoshah, be mikraot ve alachot merubod in all the things that we have in Torah Shvichtav, Torah Shpalpeh, alachot. Vadain lo raum meorot miyemem, and they haven't seen the real light of Torah in their whole life. Veron aga aleim ora Torah, right? They, they, it hasn't, it hasn't been upon them the, the light of Torah. Hashem yislach them. <laughs> Hashem should forgive them, right? Ki chavanatam l'shamayim. Because they mean good. That's again another time that he says there they mean good. They they are they, they are trying their best to do good, but this is not the way, right? Uh, so he, he he says that's that's the thing. But this is not the way that Ora Torah is is going to work. Okay, but this is not the way that Ora Torah is is going to work. Okay. Right? They're, they're great. They're like any other derech of darke Hashem Ha'esharim. But in truth, Dorot Arishonim, all of the Rishonim and Gidola Achronim, what did they learn during their day? They learned the, the Ikari thing, the Kovim, Kol Yemem Be'esek Be'ikari Natura Kedusha, Tok Tekuim Be'ahole HaMidrashot Be'gaft, which is Gemara, Pirush, Rashi, and Tosafot, Ve'shalhevet Ahavat Torah Tenar Kedusha, Aya Bo'er Be'libam, the fire, the flame of the, the love of Torah was, was alive in their hearts, Ke'esh Bo'er, like a burning fire, Be'ahavat Ve'yirat Hashem, with love and with, with uh, you know, interpretation of Hashem, and all of their, their, their um, goal was to bring the greatness of Torah and glorify it and to, to create more Talmidim, right? Like the Mishnah says, right? The first Mishnah in, in Pirkavot. To create more and more Torah in, in Klal Yisrael. In order to, to have more and more, the like Mishnah says, uh, a thousand people go to yeshiva, one becomes a posek. He, he, that's how it works. Everyone knows the famous Gemara in Brachot Dav Kavchet, right? The Gemara says, Rabbi Gamliel was a tough person. He was great, but he was a tough person. So he, he picked specifically on Rabbi Yeshua. And there, there are two incidents that Chazal felt, you know, the, the Chavre, um, Atanaim, they felt very uncomfortable with. He embarrassed him publicly, right? He had a different cheshbon for Yom Kippur, and he forced him to come carry Mukte to come to him on, on Yom Kippur according to his cheshbon. And people said, "Enough is enough. You know what? We're going to resign him. We're we'll giving early retirement, and we're going to appoint a, a, another person. And they go through who's going to be. Can't be Rabbi Akiva. Can't be this. Can't be that. Ah, oh, it's going to be Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah because he's a Syrian Ezra. He's, he has yichus and he's also rich. Is is great. Mine is a chacham." He was 18 years old at the time, right? That's the famous story of Hara Nikib and Shivim Shana. And everyone knows that result that he was really a Gilgul of, uh, of Shmuel Hanavi. Shmuel Hanavi lived 52 years plus 18 in 70. So really, his neshama was, was in this world for 70. Okay. So, Rehaz ben changed one major policy, right? Rehaz policy was anyone that's not Toho Keboro does not enter the Beit Midrash. You have to be through and through good Tamich Acham, this or whatever, right? I don't know, it's a at exactly what it means. How did you check? You had a shomer, you had a guard to check. I don't know how you check to Chokeboro. It's a machlokit what that exactly means. So, 
Rabbi ran Zayat took this Shomer and said, okay, I'm giving you vacation, go. Open the Bet Midrash, let everyone come in. And Rabbi says, up to 700 benches, and benches means probably only 10 people each, you know, was added. Thousands of people were added to Bet Midrash. And Rabbi says, that day, all of the kushiot, all the, 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 the hard, hard dilemmas and things that were hanging in the air for years and years in the Bet Midrash were solved, right? Because everyone has a chalik, chalik in the Torah, right? So everyone, everyone, come come and learn. So that that everyone knows the, the story, and um, that's the that's the greatness of Hamidu Talmidim Harbe. When you have a lot of Talmidim, everyone has has an addition that you you would be surprised, right? Everyone has a chelik of Torah that you would be surprised. So you need all of all of those those people to learn. V'chasher arhuayamim. You know how Yitzhara works, he says. He says he targets the, the greatest the greatest asset that we have, which is Tamu Torah. Right? When people are doing the, the right thing, he, he, he poisons it. Some people only learn people. This is now would be very meaningful nowadays. You have yeshiva that they, they learn only pilpul, right? Nothing else. No, no greatness in finishing Torah. Knowing, knowing the the, the um, whew, knowing the greatness of 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 the Torah and so on. Velo zulat zulat kol veshanin veMishnatenu, and we learn the Mishnah im en yirai in chokma, right? If you don't have yirat shemaim, you don't have chokma. Um, Victor Miller said once. He said he remembers. There were people in um, Europe. He was a, he was an American boy that went to Europe to learn Mir and then came back. Right? Same was with Rabbi Scheinberg. Rabbi Scheinberg. So I remember people people were on their porches on Shabbat morning um, learning Masechet Shabbat while smoking a cigarette yeah. because you know it's intellectual stimulation. They liked the thing, but the Yirat Shemaim when there's, there's no Yirat Shemaim, then you know things go down. Things go down, you know. You, you find now these you know, people, you know, in, in certain certain groups, that they, you know, they could be doing all kinds of different things, texting and finding a cooler for this and cooler for that, on, on Shabbat, and they're they're so called from people, right? But that's again, the, these these are um, things that are important. And Yira the Mishnah says and Chokma. What do you have the words? Hadurim, I think. That's why. They wrote Sifre Musar because it's needed. He's saying, he said, Musar is not a new thing. Sometimes you need Musar, sometimes you need to learn. You have to bring yourself into, into learning, right? Like Stephen says, Derech Haim, Derech Musar. It's the path of life. It has to have Tochachod and Musar, right? That the learning of the Torah should be with Yirat Hashem, should be with Musar. And, but any person that's wise and it's, it's willing to use his intellect, you'll know it's self-understood. They didn't mean that you should learn this and not learn Gemara, not learn Halakha, not learn Shukhan Aruch. That the whole day a person should be learning Musar. What's going to be with the Torah, right? As we're going to see, it's going to bring much needed sources to, to emphasize the importance of, of having a Hekef in Torah, knowing a lot. Ella, Kavatam Ratsuya their Kavana was, Shekoli Kar Kiviat Limud. That the ikar of the limut should be Torah shbichtav and Torah shbalpeh and halachot and so on and so forth. And then you, you need yirat shemaim. If you don't have Musa, if you don't have yirat shemaim, then it's gonna, you know, stray out of the path. So you, to keep yourself in the path, you need Musa. 
right? It's like the salt that you put in the tefua, not to get not not to get moldy and rot, but the tefua is the is, is the Torah, right? Not 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 the musar. You have to have a backbone, strong backbone, of actual yidiyat Torah, Torah b'chtav and Torah b'alpeh, right? Vehen ata bedurot alalu. Let's see if we could, we could get to, to the at least the perek bet. Vehen ata bedurot alalu ba'avonotenu harabim na'pochu, right? It's become exactly the opposite. Hagavua hashvel. The, the high thing, the, the important thing has become down. Right? Many people spend a lot of their time, almost all the time, in Sifri Musar. Be'omram. And their, their claim is, This is, they say, the most important thing that a person should be doing in life. Because it fires up your heart to love Hashem. And that's what's important, right? What's more important than loving Hashem? I learn Musar. Ah, it fires me up to, to learn. That, that's their, their claim. Because it helps you to, to you know, subordinate your heart to Hashem. To break the Yetzirah Hara from Ta'avot, from the desires of this world. And to be straight in, in, in good Midot. The Keter Torah munach bekeren zavit, and happens to be with this that the Keter Torah, the greatness in Torah, is is put in the corner. Nobody cares about that. Ubeinai raiti bepelach echad. He says, I saw Rav Chaim. Says, I saw myself with my eyes in certain town shekol kachit pashet Islam zod that this became so epidemic at sheberov bate midrasham. That in most of their Bate Midrash, and by Hamrak Sifre Musar, they only have the shelves are lined with Sifre Musar, and Shas Echad Shalem Embo. They don't even have a full set of Shas, right? I won't say it, but I've, I've seen several places exactly like this, and I couldn't believe it. I said, oh, I thought that Reb Chaim was never going to happen. Like they had so many Sifre Chasidut and Musar, and I was looking for a Gemara. I was like, I can't believe it. They don't have a set of Gemara here. There's like four walls lined with Sfarim. And there wasn't one set of Shas. Oshukhan Aruch. I'm like, okay. Rab Chaim is alive and, and kicking, you know. But and they don't, they, they can't see. Mehavin ul haskili botam. Asher lo zu haderech bachar bo Hashem. This is not the way Hashem wants it. Ki lo yiratze. It's not going to be wanted by Hashem. Ve'od ma'at b'emshech hazman, yuchlu liot chas v'shalom, lelo kohen more. If this, this continues, who's going to be a posek? Who's going to be teaching halachot? Who's going to be directing the, the am in, in tariyak mitzvot? What's going to happen with the Torah? Because of this, who could stop talking? I have, I have to express myself. I have to talk. To, to tell Klal Yisrael in a clear way, people who fear Hashem, and they're concerned with His kavod. The, the real path that Hashem wants has to be explained. What's going to happen? In Yom Adin, Oy Lanum Yom Atochacha, Alavon Bitula Shel Torah, it's a real Avera of Bitul Torah, Kasher Hu Itbarach Shemo, Yekanela Litboa El Bona, it's going to be a real Cheshbon, to give, um, for, for Kavod of the Torah, um, we're going to stop here, because I want to be on time, I don't want to go over, but uh, really the next piece is going to be, part and parcel of, the, Perek Bet, so it really goes together with Perek Bet. We'll Bezat Hashem start that um, and cover more ground, hopefully, because we don't have to give a anymore. Um, next, next year, Bezat Hashem.